Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again with another episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth. Back to back weeks, because I took an extra week off before last week's episode, which people really liked to talk about Empire. This week, I wanted to talk about something that's coming out this year that we know about. That's the Assassin's Creed movie. Now, it's something I've been very skeptical on for years and years, and it's been talked about since 2009 when Assassin's Creed became a huge mainstream success with Assassin's Creed 2. Now, I've always been someone skeptical for good reasons. There's been a lot of bad video game movies in the past. It's quite a regular occurrence. There's really not many good ones to speak of. It's very easy to just to talk about the really, really shitty ones. But Assassin's Creed the movie could be different. We don't know yet, obviously it's not out yet, but I wanted to talk about what we know so far. Maybe we can make some sort of judgement on right now whether it could be a huge success or whether it looks to be like all these other video game movies, an utter failure that fails to capture the core elements that makes a video game so good, such as Assassin's Creed. Now the funny thing is, I was totally against an Assassin's Creed movie being made for so long for so many reasons. There's a lot of things I felt they need to do right to even come close to pulling off a movie in the Assassin's Creed universe. It's funny now looking back on it because after seeing some set photos, after seeing a whole lot of interviews and all this other stuff come out, of course we don't have a trailer yet, but from all these things we've seen, I'm actually kind of gonna give this movie a bit more of a chance than even I thought because there's definitely some cool stuff going on with this movie so let's get right into it now we've had the rumors of the Assassin's Creed movie for years and years now as I said and now we've finally got our setting and our character we know our main character is played by Michael Fassbender we know he's known for his roles in the X-Men movies Prometheus things like that he is a very well-versed actor He's someone I'm very interested to see play a role in the Assassin's Creed universe. Now we know Callum Lynch goes back in Anonymous and discovers his assassin lineage, obviously unlocking the genetic memories there, playing as his ancestor, well not playing as on a video game, but reliving the memories of his ancestor Aguilar in 15th century Spain. So we know our setting is in the Spanish Inquisition, which in my view very interesting setting in the late 1400s. It's a great time period, my favourite time period Assassin's Creed's gone to before, with 15th century Italian Renaissance. We added Teatro Torre there. So already they're picking a popular setting from the games in a different city, in a different sort of time and, and historical events. So it is its own unique take on it, but it's a, a familiar time period and something that we know works, at least in terms of weapons and the things the Assassins do and the way they operate as their, well, cult, if you will, or a society, or even better, brotherhood. Certainly during historical times like the Spanish Inquisition, there's a lot to play with that Ubisoft love to do, mixing their assassin story with a historical story. There's a lot of cool stuff to do, some cool cities that could be explored. I am interested to see how they do this setting in a film sense. Another thing I actually like, again, as I talked about Michael Fassbender, is the whole cast is actually quite on point. There's a few people I know pretty well, some I don't know much about. There is Marion Cotillard, who is the daughter of Alan Rickon. Now, she is known for her roles as Talia in Batman The Dark Knight Rises, so she did really well in that film, and she's been in a few other things I've seen. She's pretty cool. We have Michael K. Williams, now I'm not sure if you guys know him, but he's known for his roles in things like Boardwalk Empire, and he did a great job in that show. You also have Jeremy Irons, who is one of my favourite actors of all time, playing Alan Rickon, the CEO of Abstogo Industries. Now Jeremy Irons, it's funny to link to him and the Assassin's Creed universe. He's someone that's been, in not a real way, a part of it but in kind of a sideway part of it with a huge historical family, the Borgias, who played a huge role in Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood. Jeremy Irons played Rodrigo Borgia in Showtime's The Borgias, one of my personal favourite shows of all time. So it'll be interesting to see him actually be a part of the Assassin's Creed universe when I kind of always saw him 
as the real live action element of that history that that Ubisoft plays with in Assassin's Creed because of that show. You also have Brendan Gleeson as Callum Lynch's father. You may know him from his roles in the movie Troy back in 2004 and a bunch of other things you may know him for. And then there's a lot of actors I actually don't know yet, like Ariana Labad and, or Labad, I'm probably pronouncing all of these wrong, Carlos Bardem. There's a few names on here I'm not as familiar with, but there's definitely some cool cast members that I'm very excited to see in this film. And they're certainly not nobody actors. You know, Michael Fassbender is a not just a famous actor, he's also a very good actor. He can play a diversity of roles. He is very talented, and I trust that he can play a role like this quite well. As I've mentioned, there's a modern day element to this film, which is interesting, because there comes the questions of... You know, where does it link in with the games in terms of the modern day? Obviously, we have Alan Rickon, who's made his appearance in Assassin's Creed games before. He's the CEO of Obstoga Industries. His daughter's going to be in, in the movie, so that's a whole interesting d dilemma. Is Callum Lynch the Desmond? Are they retelling a story? There's a whole lot of questions there, though there has been confirmation in interviews that the game and movie will be totally separate, which I love, and I'll talk about that later. But because of that, there's definitely going to be things in the modern day that I see as won't as much link into the games as we might think other than the universe, like Abstergo, Templars, Assassins. The basis of the universe we have is there, but the particular story may be totally different on what they're trying to tell there in the movie. Now, something I loved when I heard it, and seeing set photos I was very happy to see, which is a huge problem with a lot of movies, is the focus on CGI and green screen filming. The reliance on special effects to tell your story really, to me, is just a really bad way to do it. Sometimes you need it, and it's useful, and it can be really good, but to rely on it for everything, and to be like, oh, we'll fix it in a post, can be a huge problem in so many films today, and it's great to see Michael Fassbender say that there's a huge use of practical effects on location shooting, as in they're out doing the filming on location that look like those places they're trying to create in the story. That's awesome to see, and seeing all the set photos that we've seen have been outside, filming on location, seeing all these effects they're using practical-wise. He talked about someone doing a real-life leap of faith, you know, into a big balloon or pillow thing. You know, there's stuntmen doing work and doing real parkour here. And that is a great sign. It's something that Star Wars The Force Awakens talked about doing before it came out and did so well. They used practical effects because they recognized that the prequels relied too much on CGI as so many films do. And I'm so happy to know that at least, even if the story's bad, they're going the right direction here in terms of how the film's going to look. Make it practical, make it look gritty, make it look real, similar to the first and the second Assassin's Creed games, and really all the Assassin's Creed games. It's really immersing us in what's supposed to be a real history that's in this universe. Now, of course, we can't know, again, what it's going to look like after they've edited it, put it all together in post. We haven't even seen a trailer yet, so there's so many questions, really, it's hard to make a judgement as of yet. But I will say this, there's some good signs here, definitely, and that's something that I was so skeptical of. There were so many things I felt they needed to do, practical effects being a huge one, getting a good cast together. Another major one was separating the movies and the games. Now, I am thankful that there's no game coming out this year, so there's no pressure to make a game based off of the movie setting now. That's what I predicted as this year's game. But there is no game this year, so there's no reason for there to be a game that links to the films. This gives the movie a huge creative boost to do their own thing, and it gives also the games afterwards to be their own thing. You know, they can be a separate universe. Now I want to talk about what I want to see and the other things that I'm hoping for with the movie, and as well talk about the things they're doing right. Obviously, establishing a separate film universe is a huge one. Them separating the universes, or not the universes, but them separating the games and the movies creatively is an awesome sign. You know, there's a modern day storyline 
with Juno going on in the games at the moment. I feel there needs to be a totally different one. In the inner workings of Abstergo would be interesting. I mean, there's, again, Alan Rickon, the CEO of Abstergo, is there. You've got this modern-day character, Callum Lynch. We've seen him looking like he's been imprisoned in Abstergo or something crazy going on. How's he in Anonymous? Do Abstergo have him similar to Desmond? Or is he with the Assassins? I'd like to see some more of the inner workings of Abstergo, how they really operate, the crazy shit they do, and how they can explain that to a mainstream audience in a film and really capture that awesomeness that is the inner workings of the Assassin's Creed modern day. But also establishing this ancestor and the fact that it's tough to make, again and again, a video game movie or a movie based off a video game because so many movies try to retell the video game but video games go for way longer than movies go for in a running time aspect so it's so hard to fit in everything and it's like oh the book was better oh the game was better it's that kind of conversation people have afterwards because they miss this bit they miss this bit if you have a separate universe you don't have to worry about that you can write your story for screen you don't have to worry about anything else I'd also like to see the same ancestor in multiple movies. Now, I say this all the time, I'm a broken record in terms of talking about multiple characters and multiple video games. It's something I hope Ubisoft go back to, and I even hope the movie does it. If they do end up making sequels depending on how this first one goes, I'd like to see them potentially focus on the same ancestor and have a reason to go back to him. He could be a really important assassin in that time period. Again. There's a time and a place to move on from that and go to a new ancestor, but it'd be nice to see them keep, again, the modern day character going if that works and have their own separate story arc in the modern day going on with Callum Lynch with his own goals that are separate to that Juno assassin storyline in the games, as well as a separate ancestor storyline and how he links to the modern day. I'd just like to see this whole separate film universe or film universe or whatever carry on and really establish itself as something that's so important in the Assassin's Creed universe, but yet doesn't have to be directly addressed with the games and vice versa. So I'd probably sound like a broken record in terms of this separating the movies and games, but it just is that important thing for it. And it's something I'm really glad to hear that they've said they're doing that. Again, we don't know until we see it, how much that means. I'd also like them to be careful. Again, they're finished filming, so it's tough anyway, but I don't need to see too much fan service. I don't need to see a cameo from Ezio. I don't need to see a cameo from Xiao Yun since they were both alive during that time. Actually, Xiao Yun was not in the... It depends what year they're setting the Spanish Inquisition in. Um, because it started in 1478. Xiao Yun wasn't born. Ezio was in his prime then. So it just depends. Like, I don't need to see all this fan service. Like, I, I want to see... Things like obviously the Animus and Abstergo and show what the Assassins are, show what the Templars are, both in the past and in the modern day. That's of course you need to do that. I want to see how the universe that we know is established on screen. But I don't need to see stupid shit like dropping lines about Ezio or him appearing. Like that stuff I don't need because then you're giving, I guess, too much fan service and people are watching it who haven't played the games like what the fuck's going on? And sometimes you could it could be a bad fan service anyway, I mean, people who've seen it are also like, or play the games are also like, scratching their head like, that was pretty fucking shit. Again, it'd probably only be a little thing, so I mean, it's not that big of a deal. In terms of how bad video game movies have been, you just need to focus so much on establishing your own story in this movie, and not worry about all this other shit. Tell the story, tell the right story, and do it in the right way. It's going to be so tough to do. It's not that I have high expectations for it being good. It's it's going to have to do so much for me to think it's good. You know, it, it can't just be an average film. If it's an average film, I'm going to shit all over it because I hold Assassin's Creed pretty sacred, especially seeing as I've always said you shouldn't make a movie out of it. So since they're doing it, I'm like, cool, you want to do it? Fair enough. But I've got high expectations, a high bar for me to call it a good film. I hope it is. There's definitely some good signs. I look forward to seeing a trailer soon, and I look forward to watching the film, and I hope it's good. I, I'm not sitting here wishing it's going to be bad to be like, oh, I told you so. I want it to be good. I just struggle to believe it can be just from the history of video game movies. But I hope to be proven wrong, 
Let me know what you guys think of the Assassin's Creed movie. Are you looking forward to it? Do you think it will be good? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys heaps for watching this video and sticking around here to the end. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth and all other videos that will be out of my channel.